Hi folks and welcome back to some more Ultimate General Civil War and today it is the 6th of April 1862 and our army approaches, well it's going to be the Battle of Shiloh. Uh, I would say our army approaches ready for battle but this is not how the Battle of Shiloh was fought. The Union were not expecting a fight here and they were well and truly surprised. Uh, although it was a catalogue of errors on both sides and possibly the most confused battle of the war to date. So we'll jump in and I'll explain more as we go. Hopefully our boys are going to give a good show for themselves today. Your army moves down the Tennessee River and disembarks at Pittsburgh Landing. You're expecting Major, Don, Major General Don Carlos Buell to join you with the Army of the Ohio for an attack on Corinth 22 miles inland. 22 miles inland. You must defend your position until both armies meet and continue the expedition. Didn't quite go like that. Yeah, the Confederates had other plans for this. So the Battle of Shiloh. We have transported our corps to Pittsburgh Landing located on the west bank of the Tennessee River. In order to guard a wider area, we've established multiple encampments south of Pittsburgh Landing. The Army of the Mississippi under Major General Albert Sidney Johnson, they're the Confederates, is known to operate in the region, but should not be in condition for offensive actions. Tomorrow, you expect to combine your armies and advance towards Corinth, 22 miles southwest. The crossroads of the Confederacy, until our armies arrive, until our allies arrive, However, Pittsburgh Landing must be defended at all costs. So, basically, Grant landed his, uh, his, his army uh, on this bank of the Tennessee River and had his back to the river, expecting to, uh, to meet up with these reinforcements arriving and then march on Corinth, which was uh, way off in this direction. The Confederates, however, under Albert Johnson, decided, well, they got wind of this and decided to attack Grant before the reinforcements could arrive and with his back to a river, this was the possibility for a complete annihilation of the entire Union Army. Because these, these, these aren't like rivers in the UK. These are big rivers and uh, there's no easy escape over them. However, instead of taking a few days to get his army into position, the Confederates took a lot longer. But they did achieve almost complete surprise despite lots of Union soldiers and pickets observing Confederate forces in the woods ahead. In fact, one of Sherman's captains, I think Sherman in the Union force was a uh, division commander at this point. Uh, so one of his captains came to report rebels in the woods so many times that Sherman had him court-martialed for insubordination, telling him there's no rebels in the woods. And of course, at dawn the very next day, Sherman found out quite differently. So let's drag in. We've got the first corps. The second corps is going to get involved in here. And there's going to be some troops that are not directly in our army uh, join us as well, because uh, this is going to be a big battle. So we're going to pull, pull them in. We've got 12 brigades. It looks like we're all going in together. Let's hope this is going to be good. There's a lot of woodland in this and a river to our backs, which we have to be careful of. So we've transported our army via the Tennessee River to this location, Pittsburgh Landing, and we're preparing to advance further south. Our encampments are spread out to warn of any possible rebel attack, starting from the west at Shiloh Church, which is where the battle gets its name from. And ending here on the west bank of the Tennessee River. That's a lot of land for us to possibly retreat over. We're expecting General Buell tomorrow. Uh, then we will unite our forces and strike out over southern soil. So, General, our pickets have reported enemy movements a few miles to the south south here we go it looks like our fellows are in the front line of this attack maybe it's a decoy tactic and rebels are planning to attack us from another direction in any case our right flank at shiloh church must be defended our right flank yes we're looking from the top down so it's going to be the other way around it would be wise to deploy some skirmishers to scout this area and try and understand the confederates true intentions you're going to see some uh, some new brigades in this by the way folks you should especially in the second corps uh, those of you who've picked brigade names will see some of them in here. We've still got room for more commanders. If you would like to lead the infantry or the artillery, let me know. We've got a queue of people waiting for cavalry brigades. And we're not going to have as many cavalry brigades, so we're probably full on that from this point onwards with the queue that we've got. But if you want to lead something else, then let me know. Mobilize your forces and stay alert. Right, so let's have a look at where we are. Uh, so uh, do we have a compass on this? I'm guessing this is north and this is south then. So we suspect trouble coming from this direction. And don't worry, folks, the battlefield will open up as we go along. It's not going to be just this big. Now, we have a few brigades that are a little bit battered from previous encounters. Uh, most notably Jedi's Brigade here. Okay, so we kind of need to, to, uh, to look after these guys. But what we do also need to do is put out a nice row of skirmishers. Actually, I'm going to put Jedi's men into that 
I don't know, it's called Fortifications. I don't think it's particularly great cover. But let's, uh, let's actually form up in the woods and get a bit of protection going on. We've got, yeah, time's moving on, so that's okay. That's a brigade there. I'm going to go into the woods because I believe they're possibly better cover than uh, the farmhouses. I might be wrong in that. And the artillery doesn't have a great position, so I'm going to just deploy them in the field over there. Woods do obviously get in the way of, uh, of artillery batteries. And let's put some skirmishes out as well so we can see what the hell is coming and where from. Jedi's men. We'll put some back in the camp. The skirmishers can go and occupy the camp. Skirmishers do fine in buildings, obviously, or around building areas. They're small enough to sort of take advantage of the cover there. But we'll have another look at the cover system in a moment once we get deployed. Bearbox Brigade. Have they seen combat already? I can't remember. There's a curious um, thing about that. They called seeing combat seeing the elephant. If you had been in combat once the first time, you had seen the elephant. I'm not sure where the phrase comes from. I'm not sure why it was that. It's just a, just one of those things. Strange saying. Did it come from going to the circus and seeing the elephant? And I don't know. I don't know. So you can you can see with all the wooded terrain around here how it would be possible for armies to sneak up on each other. Enemy forces detected. Oh, we've spotted something. Shaver's Brigade. That's a that's a big old brigade right down there. Okay, we don't need to be across that river. Let's let's come back. But we do want to be in a position where we can maybe outflank these guys. I'm leaving uh, Badger's Brigade. They're good quality soldiers over there with good quality rifles. We won't be able to get any information on these. The Frisian Volunteers. We have Lorenz rifles, so that's good. Chris Pinkney's brigade moving up into the woods. Or the skirmishers rather. And we're just gonna we're just gonna hold a position back here. Frangus' battery. These are the 12 pounders. I've re-equipped Ben's battery with a uh, long-range rifled cannon, which would be great for an encounter like this. They're moving up. Oh, there's another brigade. Woods Brigade. Look, these are big brigades coming up. These, these are things that we do need to be a little scared of. One kill so far. You can see long-range artillery fire, especially when troops are in woods, isn't amazingly effective. Uh, what would be effective, though, is just piling some skirmishes onto the flank of these fellas. And let's get engaged. You're armed with the Harper's Ferry Rifle. That's a good rifle. Okay. Um, I could do with some reinforcements. Do I send Badger's men forward? Do I send Jedi's men forward? Well, we're engaged with something. We're shooting some forward elements of... I'm not quite sure what. What are you armed with? Okay, it should have long enough range for this. Nice, that'll do. That'll do. Just, just shoot those guys. That's close enough. Skirmishes and woods should should fare quite well versus formed infantry. Early on in the war, uh, both sides did use tightly formed battle lines, pretty much Napoleonic style. As the war went on, the, the units learned to use sort of a slightly more open battle line, not as wide open as a skirmish line, but like a thick skirmish line. Especially for prolonged and protracted engagements. Cleburne's brigade. Okay, Cleburne was one of the, the better commanders on either army uh, in the West during the war. Very reliable. He was an Irishman, I think, who'd moved out there out to America to make his, make his fame and fortune. Certainly earned his fame as, a, as an army commander, or a division commander, I think he rose up to be, but uh, sadly it, uh, it cost him his life later in the war. He also suffered a terrible wound where I think a bullet passed through one of his cheeks and took out some of his teeth, maybe went out the other side, or ran out his mouth, but it left him horribly scarred. Uh, so he grew a beard to try and hide it. Now that injury, that rings a bell because Bernard Cornwall, the other guy who wrote the Sharp books, the Napoleonic War, Richard Sharp stuff, he wrote another series called Starbuck Chronicles. And his main character in there, Starbuck, who was a northerner but fought for the south, suffered a very similar sort of injury in, I think, the last book where he had a bullet come through one side of his mouth out the other and take out some of his teeth. And I wonder if, if Bernard Cornwell had been inspired by hearing about what had happened to Patrick Cleburne over that. 
I don't know. It's just, just a thought. Oh, hang on. We've got cavalry there. We can actually... We can put some firepower onto the cavalry because they... I'm not saying they're sitting ducks, but uh, we should maybe target them. We've got something to the south. Okay. Okay. That's, that's something bigger. We need to make sure our skirmishers are in a position where they can support to the flanks. Uh, let's have a look. Yeah. This, this is rough. This is quite rough. Okay, I want to bring the artillery up where they've got a better line of fire. It's a little bit dangerous. We've got McCracken's boys in there. I didn't see them in there. Right, where are they likely to want to be deployed to? We have enemy brigades. Hardy was one of the corps commanders, which implies that this is a, the whole corps. I think Hardy was, was he the second corps? I can't remember. <laughs> but he had a whole corps. And that's that's not that's not good against our tiny little blocking force here. They've got supplies on the field. We have none at the moment. Where should I put the the Saint McCrackens? Bear box men falling back, but they're, they're doing absolutely fine. If I can keep them in the woods to get better cover. Speaking of cover, see in the woods they get really good cover. It's looking at 100%. In this thing, 67. So it's often better. I'm going to put, I'm going to redeploy Jedi's Brigade like that. I think I'll get better cover value. Yeah, it's going up, look. Using the buildings and the trees together rather than just be, well, I mean, it's a picket fence. There's no point sitting around that. It's not going to be great. Okay, we've got stuff coming through. I'm going to deploy you boys over here. And we might need to we might need to pull Badger's brigade back. Oh, we've got another one spotted. I need to be ready to pull. The, oh, we've got reinforcements. We've got Whitakers. Se oh, this is the second corps coming in. Nice. Okay. Sean's brigade, the Ohio Outlaws. We've got. Now then, do I want to keep them all together? It doesn't really matter for our intents and purposes. That did actually make quite a difference. I'm going to keep these guys in reserve, actually. Let's, let's bring them down here until we get sorted out. Yep, you boys had better start falling back. It's okay, we've got stuff ready. Jedi's Brigade. Do you know what? I'm going to put some Kraken straight in there and Jedi's are going to fall back into reserve. Because this is a stronger brigade right at the front. I'm going to double quick them in though. Badger's men have fallen back. That's okay. That's okay. Badger, you're fine. You're fine. We'll leave the skirmishes out front. Oh, we've got. Oh my god. Bear box skirmishes have been captured. I did not see that coming. Okay, you need to get back in the trees. Well, that's a sad loss of 108 men right there. Quite possible for such things to happen in very confusing circumstances as we have now. It looks like some Kraken's repositioned, but I don't think they're taking full advantage of that cover there. Move Jedi's men forward so we've got some support here. Okay, and the artillery just wants to fall back a bit. Yeah, we don't want to lose any artillery, he says, as a volley comes in. It's okay. Most of the boys got away there. This, this sort of artillery, in particular, the smooth boss stuff, is deadly at close range because it can really blast away with canister fire, which is like a giant shotgun round. Here they go. Johnson's brigade is coming in. We've got three brigades firing at them, though. So I can't see them. Yeah, I can't see them making it across there. What we want is defensive cover in trees with open ground in front of us to make like a killing field. This is not good. Right, I'm going to deploy the Ohio Outlaws onto this flank. Right, that brigade has been stopped in its tracks. Excellent. Bring the battery forward just a little bit so it can continue its support. Cleveland's men have gone flying in. The Frisian volunteers are falling back. Can we, when they when they rally, I'm going to get them to rejoin the, uh, the regiment. I'm going to put Sean's brigade right behind here in the woods for support. The 
There's nothing threatening this side at the moment, so that's good. Let's bring up Chris Pinkney's skirmishers again. It's good to get some eyes on the enemy down here. And Badger's men are falling back. Okay, you need to, on the double. You got in there, I'm going to take that off so they can slow down. And luckily I'm in, in better quality ground here because this would be brutal otherwise. I hear a charge going in. Stevens Brigade. They've met Badger's men. The Ohio Outlaws getting their first taste of action there. They are armed with the trusty <laughs> .69 Springfield musket. So this is the second Corps troops. They, they're getting the uh, the older weapons, sadly. And at this stage of the war, for all this was 1862, the war had been going a year by the Battle of Shiloh. Um, there were still lots of troops on both sides armed with smoothbore muskets instead of the better rifled weapons. Although, at the ranges that were involved in most of the Civil War battles and the formations they were fighting in, it, it is debatable how much of a benefit having the rifled weapon would be. They were definitely more accurate, but a lot of the close range engagement, engagements, sub 100 yards, I don't know that it would make a huge difference. Anyway, Badger's men are doing fine. Badger's skirmishers should probably rejoin the parent regiment there, I think. It's okay, we've held them solid so far. Frisian volunteers. They've taken a few. Bearbox. Well, Bearbox Brigade has taken more losses than you suggest because they lost their skirmishes, but that's fine. Actually, there's Frisian volunteers over there. They can rejoin. I hear a big brigade coming in here. It's Stuart's men charging the badgers. That's a potent volley in their face there. And this is why having reserves can be uh, like really, really crucial. You can rejoin. Look at the, the bodies strewn across the field. I don't know about this part of the battlefield. I can't remember. But other part of the battlefield, the, the, the Union forces were swept back really quickly as the Confederates came charging out of the woods. It wasn't a total surprise to some of the Union forward troops and, and uh, sentries. But it was a surprise to the Union officers and the, the people in charge. They just hadn't, they hadn't believed the reports. They didn't think it was possible that the uh, Confederate army would get in here in, when it did, uh, undetected, in a position to attack. And it, it was quite a rout. But what also happened is that the Confederate troops, storming through Union camps like this, stopped to, to loot what was left behind. There was like, um, there was fires with uh, cooking pots full of food. There was baggage, there was all sorts of things. And for the Confederate Army, which was often not as well supplied as the North, in terms of everything, you know, regular food supplies, clothing, shoes in particular, the chance to go and rifle through stuff was uh, just, it was too big a temptation. So a lot of the Confederate officers spent the morning trying to round their men up and push them forward to, to stop the, the looting. You guys are doing great. Okay, we, we have stopped the rebels in their tracks. Sadly, we are running short on ammunition already, but we don't have a supply wagon on the field, which is, is not helpful. I think we can get behind them and flank them, you know. Well, they've gone, so that's that's perfect. What I'll have to watch out for... There's another charge coming in here. There's another one stopped in his tracks. Just to let you know, I am playing at normal difficulty level. I'm, I'm not good at on easy. Although we do seem to be holding them up quite well. These are two-star brigades as well. I don't know what weapons they've got. We, we, oh, God, hang on. That's Cleburne's Brigade coming in. We've got Wood's Brigade there also. I'm wondering if I should put... Uh, I wonder if I could fit Sean's Brigade in here. Let's bring them down. There's another one routed. Meanwhile, on this flank, there's... I don't think we need to worry about this flank, you know. Let's, let's bring this down. 
Is there any sign of any Confederate artillery anywhere? Yes, there is. There's Triggs battery. It's a big one down here. I've got to be careful. Hang on, the Frisian volunteers might be in a bit of a mess here. They're engaged. Confederates attack our left. We're looking from the top down, so it's actually the other side. The Confederates are massing on our left flank. Right, that's not good news. We must make a defensive line and hold them. We'll get more reinforcements as soon as they are available. Are these our boys? Our main objective is to hold the centre of our encampment. These, these are ours. There's the Yorkshire Volunteers and Washington's Rangers, our cavalry regiment. Okay. Godspeed, General. Well, this is, these, these are our troops. Oh, hang on, wait, no, 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 no. This, I see how the game's doing this. I've forgotten, it's been years since I've played this. So this is our other flank. We can't see our original flank, which is fighting off screen to that side. So these are the boys deployed over here. Uh, we don't have the ammunition wagons, and I wonder if that's by design at this point. So once again, we need to form a defensive line See, there's a there's an open field there. I think that sounds like the place. So what I'm going to do is we're going to put Blake's brigade down here. Uh, Alex's brigade in the woods here. We've got two lots of artillery. Now we've got Ben's battery. You'll recognise you've seen before. They're the ones with the quality 10-pounder ordnance rifle guns. Uh, those are a good, reliable cannon. Enyart's battery. Now this isn't anyone we've named, this is just one of the games uh, that the, the commander in this case is named. So if you would like to lead one of the artillery batteries here, then do shout out. These are armed with six pounder smoothbore field guns, which are kind of obsolete by this phase, but it's all we had to fit them out with. And they were certainly in use. Okay, let's have a look. This is gonna be, I think, the trickiest side to hold because we have a hill but we, we don't have any great terrain to hold. This would be a good site for an artillery battery, I think, particularly something like a rifled battery where it can see and shoot over a long distance. So if we're gonna hold that there, we're gonna to have to put troops down in the woods on either side. The Yorkshire volunteers, we'll move them forward and we're going to move, now these smooth bores, these, I don't know where to put these. I might put them back over here I could put them, yeah, go on, let's put them back over here for now. And we'll figure out what's going on. Right, let's let's play this on. And then we've got the Washington's Rangers. Now, these are a cavalry brigade, but they are set up more for melee. They've got uh, the Palmetto 1842 Block Pistol Single Shot. I've never heard of that. I'm going to have to look that one up. But basically, that and Sabres. So they're designed for, like, melee engagements rather than armed with carbines for... Uh, skirmishing type engagements which are a lot of the cavalry in the civil war did sort of i mean i think they're all armed with carbines if they could get them but um they did all certainly develop the ability to skirmish and fight as dismounted infantry during uh, during the war right then blake's brigade i'm going to send some skirmishers forward so we can see what's going on now these guys from the second corps very much armed with sort of second-rate weapons at the moment. The Lorenzis are okay. The Austrian rifles. Send them down to that place. We've spotted something coming in, okay. So I might, I might have my guys too much spread out here. The cavalry can hold the center. If it was skirmish cavalry, it would be absolutely fine for this, but it, it is not. So Gibson's brigade coming up there fast. Um, let me see if I can deploy the artillery at the wood line and see if they can shoot down the road. Okay, let's let's deploy a little bit more evenly here. The Yorkshire Volunteer Skirmishers, they are armed with Lorenz rifles. Okay, I could send stuff over the river or over this stream and see what, what this is. I think the Rebs are going to be coming from this direction. I think we can engage them early. Let's see if we can engage them early. Springfield Rifles, they're well set up. And Harper's Ferry. So these, these are some, some quality weapons we've got here. There we go. Anderson's Brigade, okay. These are big ones. I would suggest 
falling back from that. We'll let the artillery do some long range blasting. It's unlikely to pick up a lot of kills shooting as it is into woods like that. Um, we're seeing nothing on this side. And the artillery is not going to get any work over... Oh, wait, no, hang on. Pond Brigade coming in. That's definitely going to be a thing then. I mean, this is a big battery of artillery we've got now. I bumped the guns up to 16. As the officer in command of, of Ben's battery was capable of commanding that many. So we need to make use of that. We need to try and hold this. Um, the cavalry is... Cavalry is not great at holding the centre of some way. It's better off on a flank where it can get behind the enemy and charge into them. Or hunt down uh, supply wagons or batteries like that. That's okay. I think we just want to hold them at this, this point. You can hear the sound of people charging. Okay, I think we're going to swap sides over here. So I'm going to bring over the Yorkshires. And I sound like a load of Yorkshire puddings, don't they? And I'm going to move the cavalry over to this side to defend the battery. The rifle cannon are actually... The range isn't amazing on them, but it's, it's, it's better than the smooth bores. Just. And they should be more accurate. They are more accurate at range as well. So we do have flanking shots there, but the distance... Is probably tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring in the Yorkshire skirmishers down there. I'm wondering if I should uh, rush these guys back. It's okay. We're in position now, so that's absolutely fine. Let's let's form on that flank like that. Brilliant. Get the skirmishers in into Pond's brigade. Here comes some enemy cavalry. Okay. If they keep going, they are going to be in for a world of pain when they run into a first volley. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Cavalry units are quite brittle. They're not, they're not like Napoleonic cavalry, which are often used for frontal assaults. Um, they, they can be used in that, but you, you need the enemy to be sort of weakened or occupied or shot up first. Which was pretty much the same as Napoleonic cavalry, charging fully formed fresh infantry was rarely uh, effective even back in the day there we go so the rifle guns are going to work we've got something to shoot at now I want these to cross these big open lines uh, at which point we're going to throw in the skirmishes on the flank look like this the six pounder guns are actually doing some good work there but they have a nice they have a nice target right in front of them there we go. Once we open up with... Look at that. The small arms fire. One thing to note. The Union forces did have a pretty regular uniform. The Confederate forces not so much. So it's often... The war is often talked about the blue and the grey. And it, it wasn't that simple. The Confederates never had a consistent supply of uniforms. I think the official uniform colour was grey. But they used... A lot of homespun stuff, whatever they could get, captured uniforms sometimes even. And at the start of the war, um, it certainly happened at the Battle of Bull Run in the first year of the war. Sometimes both sides had the same coloured uniforms and that caused a lot of friendly fire issues. What have we got over there? I've got a brigade and my big artillery battery currently not really engaged over here. But I am reluctant. I can bring the skirmishes in so we can see what we've got. I'm reluctant to move the brigade off this flank unless it looks like there's something serious kicking off here. Skirmishers, uh, skirmishers are taking a pasting. The Yorkshire volunteers themselves doing quite well and Alex's brigade. Wow. I think we just uh, a simple case of we outrange the enemy there. The artillery is doing some good work. Oh, we've seen something. Okay. So, right, th this is a good reason to to fall back with the skirmishers. Uh, yeah, there was something coming over this side. And there may be more. You guys fall back as well. Clemens Brigade arrives on the battlefield. This is perfect. 
I'm going to need to move them up fairly fast though. And uh, there's another artillery battery coming in. Well, as we have what I consider to be a really nice artillery position over here. The, again, not you. No, 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 not you. You're, you're going there. Just, just there. I want the artillery battery. These are also six-pounder smoothbore guns. Okay. Right. This is this is not good. You're you, you're going to have to fall back. Hang on. Just bring the battery to the edge of that wood. I need to fall back with the with the batteries. We do not want to take a volley in the face at close range from a whole infantry brigade. Clemens Brigade arrives in the nick of time. Jenkins Cavalry there. I'm going to catch them out with the Washington Rangers. Here we go. Here we go. Charge in. I think we're going to chase them off. I mean, they've been routed once. Bring those boys up. Well, we've routed them. That's, that's nice. Chalmers Brigade runs. Washington Rangers have uh, have got in. Excellent. You need to fall back instantly. Do not go running down there. We've got things solidly held here. I feel like we're doing considerably better than the real Union forces did on the, on the first morning of the Battle of Shiloh. We'll leave our skirmishers on that flank. Excellent. So Clemens Brigade got there in the nick of time just in the nick of time and change the outcome of that situation right let's, let's bring Ben's artillery and Nelson's artillery up again and I'll put the skirmishers forward just to help get some vision down there Jackson's men on the other side of there I need to preserve the uh, integrity of our forces because I'm just going to fall them back a bit so that we can... Are you in good cover? Yeah, you're in great cover. Let's just fall back a little bit. Not run. Sorry, no, not run. Just fall back. There, there we go. That's that's fine. So we just uh, got support to our flanks. Okay, so the little six-pounder artillery doing great work over there. Mind you, the rifled guns are now starting to pick up some uh, some some kills here. Uh, there's another brigade coming up. Here comes Anderson's. Right, I'm going to move Stone's brigade down there. Stone is, I think... Yeah, it's not, it's not one of you guys. So we have an infantry brigade there if anyone would like to take command of it. Anderson's brigade coming, charging up the hill at Clemens. Come on. We can see that the bodies littered across the field. Breckenridge's reserve corps is also here attacking us. Right, that's not great news for us. If that's even more troops coming up. That's Bragg's Corps. So we might be facing two Confederate Corps here. Can you see the canister fire going off? Like giant shotgun blasts? Oh god. Look at the size of this brigade. That's on the double. Stone. You are going to come and save the day here. I mean, having the artillery there on the flank is also making a massive difference, but... There we go. We're going to stop something. Clemens Brigade's taking this head on. Luckily, they're not getting into combat. Oh, God! That's a mistake. Right, bring the cavalry round now. We have to hope that a bit of skirmish fire into the flank of that is going to be enough. Can we, can we order that one, please? Yeah, we, we got well caught out there. On this side, we're holding really well. Ammunition is, is running low, though. We've both routed. That is interesting. Do we have our core commander? He's not here. That's okay. We, we will rally. Look at that. See, look at that the shotgun blast going in there. That is absolutely brutal, as it was. I mean, it's... They're, they're like... They're, I think they're big rounds. They're a musket ball size or bigger. 
depending on what the, what we were shooting. But um, at like ranges of like point blank, oh, up to about 400 yards, I think it was effective. Obviously, at that distance, it would be spread out quite a bit. But when you're firing at packed ranks of men, they would often go through the first. It, it wouldn't just always stop at the first person it hits. It, it was like, it would clean out ranks and files of men. It was brutal stuff. There's not many Hollywood films actually portray artillery properly in either Napoleonic or American Civil War times. They always see them shooting and then a the big cloud or an explosion of dust at the feet of the men. And they did fire shell. They would often fire round shot as well, just like a solid ball. Um, they did have shells that did land and explode or could air burst if the fuses were short enough. Looks like cavalry's coming in. I don't think that's going to be effective. Clemens Brigade is doing a fantastic job in the middle there. And now look at the artillery. Holy crap. Artillery doing great. So Stone's men luckily didn't lose too many. We can move them back in. We need to cover this flank of this battery. I wonder if I could... I'm thinking I could possibly get... Hang on, I feel like I can get the... Um, I think I can get the skirmishes in here. And Blake's men. Blake's not being terribly engaged. I just need to watch out for something horrible and sneaky coming up there to get me. Which is quite possible. But at this point, we can just shoot Jackson in the flank and we're going to be good over here. Yep. I look at the cat. Look at this carnage. Now on one, I don't know if we we're going to fight it, but on one part of the battle there was this area of woodland, I think. It was like a copse of woods. I think it was the Hornet's Nest it got the, the name. Oh, hang on, we've got, we've got trouble down here. Let's just move off to that side. And the Union defenders of this place held on so stubbornly that it, it just bought time. It held up the Confederate assault. But it was sheer carnage, and the Confederate brigades were coming up. They were being thrown in piecemeal, and it wasn't a very well-coordinated attack. Otherwise, it could have been a different story. But um, not unlike something like this. The Yorkshire Regiment are taking some casualties, but we are doing our job. Clemens men doing great. Stone's probably about to take a hit down there. We're in decent cover. Okay, Jenkins' cavalry's come back for another go. <laughs> it's advancing in, and it just blasts their carbines off at close range. That's not the way to use them. Bragg's moving up. In fact, Bragg was, I think, the Confederate commander responsible for throwing the brigade's piecemeal into the hornet's nest. Oh God, Andersons have just turned up again. I feel like we're maybe driving the enemy across the field over here. I need to have something watching my flank, but we can move the skirmishes in and cause some trouble. The cavalry would be quite useful around there. Ammo is, is, a, is a problem. I could try bringing the cavalry around here. It's good at attacking units that are in retreat. So I could bring them up. At the moment, they're there to try and offer a bit of protection should anything charge the artillery. Come on, we do need to try and, and push across here. But we need to buy some time and, and relieve some pressure on the centre here. Come on, go and shoot Statham's brigade. They've got plenty more at the back here. Ammo is a problem. We've, apart from the Yorkshires, which have been the target of quite a concentrated attack, we've not taken too many casualties in this. I can't see a, a great opportunity for our cavalry to attack on this side. Do you know what? I, I think we can get that um, artillery looking the other way. I'm going to move Blake's skirmishes over. Come on then. Come on then, Alex. Come on then, Blake. Let's... I mean, we're the ones charging across the field now, but the difference is that... Oh, God, there's, there's reinforcements coming down there. Stop and stop. Pond's brigade reappears. 
Okay, let's let's make sure we shoot that. Gladden's men coming in. Anderson making another attempt. Okay, we're taking some casualties. I think we're taking from the artillery fire. Okay, that's not good. Right, go and shoot Robertson's battery over there. Come on, Blake. What have you got? you got Springfield rifles. You can do this. You can sharpshoot them and snipe them away. Right, four limb skirmishes back. Just redeploy back in the woods because I want to be back in the cover. Remember, this, this is a game, this is a battle that we have to outlast the enemy. I don't need to take any stupid risks or unnecessary casualties. Come on, drive those cannon off. Skirmishes in the woods. We're, it's good, they're looking at, the artillery's looking at the skirmishes and they're not looking at my stuff. Let's move Stone's men in. Take that off so they don't tie themselves out too much. These guys are running. Well, look, are they? They're not fleeing. Nice. We we are going to take some flipping hits from that, but uh, yeah, it is rough that. But I mean, it's better than the artillery battery shooting at formed ranks of men over there. I just need to be careful that we don't get surrounded and wiped out. That's that's what we do. We need to be careful of. New York's just holding their own. I mean, it's... Oh, withdraw to the hornet's nest, so we are going to fight the hornet's nest. Here we go, then. Where is the hornet's nest? It's this area here. This. Okay, I can see why it would get this this name if, if the enemy are charging over open fields. Confederates keep attacking us. This is a perfect location to establish a new defensive barrier. And there's our supplies. Rebels will have to dislodge us from here to proceed towards Pittsburgh Landing. It's advised to quickly secure this area before our flanks get overrun. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, by delaying them as much as possible around Shiloh Church, we increase our chances to secure Pittsburgh Landing. Good luck, General. I think it's just flipped us. No, it hasn't. Right, let me hit pause so we can see what's going on. So we've now got the battlefield opened up massively. Oof, we're not going to stop that, are we? There's there's two brigades, there's three brigades coming up here. We've just got to we've just got to pull out. Uh, this is going to be this is going to be quite savage. So these skirmishers, I can't actually order them to do anything yet, but that's fine. Um. Yeah, leaving skirmishers behind to try and slow things up while the main... Fo yeah, I can see why we're at risk of being surrounded here, actually. So we want to be back here. We want to be fighting probably around those sort of angles, leaving that as open. The artillery can go in there, and we're going to need more troops on that side. Okay, so what we're going to do... Are these, guys, these guys are actually engaged, which is not good. Um, I can move the artillery up, so that's fine. And Blake's brigade can move up as well. And we're going to take position what? In the woods? Maybe in the woods. We'll, we'll move up that way anyway. Uh, the Yorkshires could do with falling back. I'm going to give these guys fall back orders and then we can start... We can just start falling back gently. Stones, I'm going to leave stones there. You are going to have to fall back. And the cavalry, oh my God, the cavalry, right. Uh, let's, let's get the cavalry out of there. We've got fresh ammunition waiting, so this is going to be excellent. Having said that, I think I'm going to take these guys. Yeah, let, let's take these guys down here and keep everyone supplied because we need to defend this bit right let's let's play skirmishes if we can artillery is, is off is anyone on i don't want people running on there on like double quick Clemens Brigade, deploy skirmishes and then fall back. You fall back. Fall back. 
We don't want people wiping out here. I think we've maybe taken a lot of casualties down there. Right, you take the road up there. We will deploy the artillery at a later date. It would be good to just keep on shooting, but we've got to fall back. Right, get these fellas up here quick, and we will sort out the mess when we get there. So I think, oh, apart from this, let's go up there like that one. And we should have some skirmishes down here. Yeah, these guys need to, like, find a safe way through. <laughs> That's going to be difficult. I could leave them down here and just constantly pester the enemy artillery, which would be smart, but I think we will we'll get cut off and we will lose them. So I'm going to try and bring them back. Although, for the risk of losing 100 men, it's maybe, it's maybe worth it. Okay, Bear Box Brigade, move up. So over here, we're doing fine over here. Let me bring the battery to where it can see. Actually, this battery, I might want to... Yeah, we've got a solid line here. Let me bring uh, Jedi's Brigade into the woods on this side. I think that's a good move. Um, this is Frangus's battery. How's things looking over here? We've got supplies there. We can actually... Ooh, can we get the supplies? Of course, some major mayhem. Clemens Brigade. Keep going back, boys. Right, so I think what we actually want to do... Do you know what? Let's, let's occupy this. And the Yorkshire Regiment, the one at the back. So, we're going to form up around here. But we're also going to form in the... Um, I thought you were running a bit fast. We're going to go on the trees on either side and just provide some, some cover from there. So Ben's battery, stop at the farm. Nelson's battery, stop there. We have reinforcements. Excellent. Now these, I don't think, are from our army. These are from the rest of the army. So uh, we don't feel particularly attached to these guys, as, as awful as that might sound. I'm going to try and hold a line across here and see see if it's a valid strategy. Flanked. Badger's Brigade flanked. Let's just pull back a little bit. We could try and advance on this side. Go on, we're going to... get those skirmishes in and start... I'll tell you what, run up. This might be risky because we might take a load of canister in the face, but we're in the trees. Get them supplies, quick. Go on, charge. Charge. Not fall back. Not fall back. Ready, charge. We should be able to capture them. Although they're not really supposed to be cut off down there. Oh my God, this is awful. Go up there, quick. Right then. You guys on the double. Run. Run, run, run. Right, Clemens Brigade is over there. I'm going to put um, all these three, I think, onto this side. The Stones Brigade is quite is quite badly beaten up. And we're going to try and hold these trees. Uh, meanwhile, we've got Hazen's Brigade. These are real units that actually fought in, in the battle. Let's come down here. Actually... I'm going to rethink that. I'm going to put Bruce's men over here. We'll keep them fairly close. Let's just bring these supply wagons down so we can make sure we've got everything. Excellent. So you guys have about gotten, gotten away. And let's just rejoin with that. So they will be tired when they get up there, but that's... that's a, actually, I'm going to take that off. They don't need to be running. Clemens Brigade. The skirmishes are coming running back very quick. How's the fight going over here? Yeah, okay, so we tried to attack the artillery battery. It was, it was too big. Oh, we've got the supplies. Hang on, if I put them on a big order like this, we'll try and get them up that way. And meanwhile, Blake's men, at risk of getting put off down there like I, I, I thought, will have to bring them back. This did happen in battles all the time. No, well, not going around the, the back like this, but units would get cut off from the rest of their formation 
and command and control would break down and in the midst of a very confusing chaotic battle like this or the wilderness or the, the several others fought in dense woodland like this yeah the units would just get lost it could be it would be very smoky all this smoke would hang around and units did get lost and broken up and then that often resulted in sad tales of uh, a friendly fire Okay, it looks like, right, that is empty. So this supply wagon has done its job. It's filled them guys back up. We may as well retreat. Oh, God. There's cavalry going around the back up there. Where is my cavalry? Get on that job. Sneaky Confederate cavalry's gone all the way around the back. Okay, can we actually catch them? There's someone broken. They're probably some skirmishers. Go on, let's try charge see if we can catch them mm, I think we're gonna be chasing them around a bit we might catch them if we're lucky right so things are definitely preparing for another fight I'm gonna go defend on the flank I think and armored brigade can go in here And Bruce's brigade we're going to put in the woods over here to outflank anything that tries to attack. And we've got some skirmishes there. We're starting to see combat now, though. I'm going to bring... Uh, have we got three batteries? Yes, we have. I'm going to bring Ben's battery down to here, where I think it can probably have the biggest effect. Enyart's men. Can't currently be seen. Uh, go on, you're, you're good up there. I'm not sure what else to do with these at the moment. We, we don't have great lines of sight. You can, in the game, actually put them behind infantry brigades and they'll shoot through. I, I think it's very sort of... Uh, feels a bit gamey in positions. If you had artillery behind the infantry but up a hill, that, that's fine. But I don't know that the game really models that quite as much as it, it should. And if you were standing in line facing an enemy attack, and you had artillery blasting away <laughs> just 50 yards behind you, just over your head, literally taking your hat off, um, I don't think you'd feel too happy about it. We have to establish our last line of defense at Pittsburgh Landing. If the Rebs take it, it's all over. We'll be surrounded and destroyed. So this is something that we absolutely had to hold on to. And the ironclads, USS Tyler and Lexington, are standing off the banks of Pittsburgh Landing, ready to assist us. They will con constantly bombard enemy unit that gets close. This is kind of true, but they weren't ironclads. I think they were just wooden gunboats, maybe with, with some... I think they were just wooden gunboats. But they did bombard the Confederate forces trying to attack up here. And uh, it, it managed to break up the attacks near the, near the river. So that, that is quite historical. Do I try and hold our ground? Or do I fall back? As long as we... One thing to watch out for is that we don't lose that. So what I'm going to do is a Stones Brigade. They are quite well beaten up. We're going to actually come back and occupy this for the simple reason that enemy cavalry can actually go and take it. Let's see if we can get that in there. That's empty. Where did that cavalry go? It's, it's got to be in the woods down here somewhere, right? I didn't see where it went. Oh, there it is. It's broken. It's running, so that's that's fine. That's fine. So do we have units down here? We do. And these supplies are coming up, which is excellent. And I'm just going to move these over here. Although we might want to watch this flank. And Blake's skirmishes. I, you're going to have to come up there as well. We've got quite a, a killing going on here. got artillery up there we do have skirmishes on this stones men clemens skirmishes can rejoin the unit i think they're going to be needed the the flank here is a little bit open i think i'm going to bring the cavalry back over to guard it now that we know that the enemy horsemen have been driven off or at least those enemy horsemen have been driven off so this was my idea here anything that approaches from this side should get absolutely marmalized by these two big brigades. As 
well as Ben's artillery sat at the back. Slowly taking casualties up there, which I don't really want, so I'm going to draw them back. And our supply wagons... I better just pull them back a little bit. They have resupplied everyone. I don't know if we can we can face off against all that. I feel like we need reinforcements. I'm going to bring Chris Pinkney's brigade back over. Let's get them going round because I don't think I don't feel like we need all these soldiers over here. Frisian volunteers. Do we move on and try and and, and force the enemy back? No. As long as we have a solid flank here, I think we should be good. If these were skirmish cavalry, this would be absolutely perfect for the job. I could dismount them, we could get them in the woods, they could go around the side, they could snipe away with their carbines. Uh, it would be very effective. Right, let's just put them in the woods and hopefully they can just sit there and surprise anyone that comes jumping out. I feel like I need to, I need, I need to do something here. Right, let's let's move up and support the hornet's nest because there's too much pressure against our two brigades here. There's far too much pressure. Right, let's see if I can just release the skirmishers. I'll just get them back, otherwise they're instantly going to get shot in the face. Right, great. So we can put them on the flank and they can actually do some work over there. Look at this! Look at this lot charging up. We've got the supplies back. Excellent. Bring them back over here. And the skirmishers can come. Do you know what? Uh, Frangus's battery is no longer doing anything of much use. Uh, let's go this way. We're going to go up and... And we're going to hold this. I'm going to order Stone's men into there. They're going to be behind fairly solid defences. Reasonable. Okay, we've got another attack forming down here, which this this isn't good as I've sent my fellas across the field here. But we are pushing these guys away, which was the, the purpose of this. Let's see if we can just get these onto the flank a little bit more. There's, looks like there's artillery in the woods down there. Right, I'm going to advance with these two, because this is a, like a, a buyer's time sort of manoeuvre. I could bring Alex's brigade out. Yes, let's let's do that. Let's do that to form up. They can go running back in. It'll be absolutely fine. He says, I have faith in my boys. They'll be fine. We have reinforcements coming from this side. Uh, this looks kind of solid now, so I'm also going to bring Bear Box... Bear... Bear... Bear Box brigade up. Uh, let's go this way. We could advance on this side. The Ohio Outlaws are about to face Cleburne's Brigade again. There's Blake's Brigade and there's Alex's Skirmishes. Where's Alex's Brigade? Are they... elsewhere? They're certainly elsewhere. I have no, no idea where. Do you know what? Let's put them in there. Let's actually... I should be in command over here. Let's bring some reinforcements up. We could leave skirmishers down here. And I'm going to bring Sean's brigade up as well. Actually, I let, let's follow the road. Let's do that properly. So we've lost some brigade. Well, we haven't lost them. They've been driven back on this side. This is, this is our cue to get Alex's brigade back. Quickly into the woods there. It's okay. It's going to be fine. Gibson's men aren't going aren't gonna to get through that. I'm fairly confident. Right. Hazen's brigade is, uh, is just rallying over there. Meanwhile, I'm coming up to provide some moral support. And I'm thinking, do we go on the offensive? There are more rebels and they have to start to push hard. 
We may, we may have to withdraw from this position. Right, you fellas. Uh, let's let's get over in the back over there. And Bruce's men, back into the woods. Yeah, we've got, we've definitely got. Oh, sh who's that? Shaver's brigade down to 740 men. I suspect they started the battle with an awful lot more than that. So, do we try and swing through here? Honestly, I'm all up for it. Badger's men, well, they've, they have lost a few, but they've done an awful good job. Right, Let, let's, let's go for this. In fact, let's send the skirmishers out again. Oh, there's, there's artillery down there. I need to watch out for that. Let's send Whitaker's men over here. And you guys are now out of ammunition, so you may as well retreat to the top where it's safe. You're kind of wishing I'd brought Frangus's battery back in, actually. I'm going to bring them back around. The artillery is doing some great work. Clemens' brigade is holding on. Wow. They need some support over there. I either have to choose to fall back. Do you know what? I, I think I'm going to choose to fall back. That's empty. Right, let's send it up there. Let's let's move you back to there. And at this point, let's let's do a grand skedaddle. Let's let them run over us some. I'm gonna form a new line across here. The enemy can try and attack us in this position if they if they wish to. Clemens Brigade. Right, you stay there. And Clemens Brigade just form on there. I've got troops moving through from that side. Oh, here we go. Look at this. This looks like a mistake, doesn't it? Skirmishes have been driven off, which is no great surprise. Holy crap. Okay, we're going to have to do this. We're going to have to open fire. We're going to have to attack the enemy artillery. Badger's men. I'm going to use the Ohio volunteers. They are fresher troops. We're going to come in. The Jedi's brigade is um, in the perfect position here. Blake's men have been driven out. Okay. Right. This, this is not the news I wanted to hear. I don't want to be fighting in the open fields. I really don't want to be fighting in the open fields. Uh, Chris Pinkney's men are not in great cover there. Let me just let me just realign that. And what I'm going to try and do is form a line like this. This is probably where I want to be. Could I bring cavalry in behind there? I maybe could. Let's see if we can bring the cavalry in. So if we lost the centre. Blake's men still still falling back there. Bruce's men firing like mad. Badger's brigade. It's time to hop over here, isn't it? Oh god, into the woods. Right, so these two brigades down here that we were. St. McCracken's are going in. Okay, let's get all this stuff defeated, please. If we can knock out the enemy artillery. We might retake this position here, actually. I had my doubts about it, but... Okay, these guys are outflanked. We are holding. We've got a better line across here. I'm wondering, is this worth bringing in the cavalry? Not with a brigade coming up, but we're, we're going to menace the flanks. We're going to stay there and menace the flanks. So if an opportunity arises, we're going to go in. You need to get stuck in. I'm going to move Hazen's brigade back in. They've got to get involved. Badger's men, you need to get in there now. On the double. Blake's men. Uh, just move up and just occupy this. So there's a bit of support here. Are we going to chase these off? I think we're going to try and chase all this stuff off. 
as risky as this is, dragging our infantry further away from where they're needed. The Ohio Outlaws have found Stewart's Brigade and is prob they're probably in a better position. We've got everything firing into Russell, but they are quite well dug in there. That sounded like cavalry charging, didn't it? Nelson's battery. Wow. The, the artillery is doing some major work in this game. Hear the sound of a charge somewhere. Okay, this is looking good. We must surely knock out the enemy artillery here. Triggs' battery is not looking too clever. Johnson himself, Albert Sidney Johnson, he actually died in the battle on the first day. Um, he was leading a charge across a peach orchard, I think. An orchard of some sort, trying to rally his men. They took a bullet to the leg, and uh, he didn't think too much of it at the time, but it actually cut the, the main artery, and he bled out. So for the want of a, a tourniquet, They, the South lost what could have been one of their better generals. He was very much hyped up, but he didn't really... He didn't really live long enough, unfortunately, to see whether he was worth his reputation. However, the fact that he nearly pulled off a complete victory over the Union Army on the first day of Shiloh, had he managed to get his army moving faster and they'd arrived days earlier like he planned, and then the Union reinforcements wouldn't have turned up for day two, it might have been a different story, but uh, his idea was right, but execution was, well, it was a difficult, complicated matter with the communications of the time and the maps of the time and, and everything else. We are just, just plugging away here at this point. We can reinforce this, though. Get Badge's men into there. Stewart's brigade coming up. Hang on, that's a charge coming in. That's a charge coming in right there. However... We are pushing this flank further and further away. Blake skirmishes destroying Frisian volunteers uh, and uh, help destroy the artillery down there. That's excellent news. It looked very shaky on this side. But the artillery is still doing major work. Did I pull... No, we've got Stone's Brigade. So we've got Stone's Brigade pulled back to defend that. Bear Brox. Bear... Yes, I can't say it, but... <laughs> Sean's Brigade. Yeah, we're going to push these guys in in case anything comes up. They're going to be our tactical reserves. Come on, Badger's men. Badger's men once again into the front line. Jedi's Brigade is taking some real pasting. You guys are going to be... I'm going to send them up there. I'm withdrawing them from the front line. They have, they have seen some serious fighting up there. St. McCracken's are now deep in enemy territory. As are the Frisian volunteers. This battery not really having a chance to, to rally before it gets attacked. Let's move these guys up. I'm worried that something might come up here and outflank us. Which, which could still cause us some problems. For all it looks like, we've got a pretty solid thing going on here. I, I don't feel 100% comfortable with it. I think it's time to throw in the cavalry. Yeah, they're going back. Although the enemy have a fresh brigade down here that I don't really want to get. I don't want them to turn around and shoot me. However, this, this is too good an opportunity. No, it's not. Nope, there's a fresh brigade behind there. However, if it's not... I'm going to try this. Statham's Brigade is retreating. Gunboats are doing some good. Actually, Frankus's battery, if I get them... Actually, I think they're doing fine there. Yeah, they're doing fine. Look at that. Those kills racking up. Come on then, let's see if we can... Nope, let's not. Let's not charge. Fully formed infantry brigade. Let's, let's retreat out of there. What have we found? We've got enemy artillery down here. Triggs battery. The question is, do I want to advance across the field to take on the artillery over there? I think if I can get them from two angles, I will. 
we still working them over? They're reloading. Volley fire. They're doing the job. Okay, we're, we're tying up an artillery battery, which, as you can see, can do murderous good effect. Right, so anyone here is absolutely beaten down. Alex's brigade. Oh my word, they are... They've had the beat down there. The Yorkshire volunteers. I mean, look, they've got so much flipping firepower against them. What's the cover like? 75% cover. Come on, shoot those in the flank. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to make a move here. Right, you go there. And at the same time, you attack from this angle. We should be able to take that battery out. I need I need to replace these guys. I'm gonna put Blake's men in. Ben's battery. 1300 kills. Right, pull out. On the double. And fall back. We'll get them out there. Using the fall back command in this game can help quite a bit. It just gets units out there faster than they would otherwise be. Uh, we should be able to hit Stuart's men quite well. Okay, did we take a huge pasting going in to attack Hodgson's battery? I, I do hope not. This also... I think the Frisian Volunteers can deal with that now. The Kraken's men are in a great position now to outflank that brigade up there. Trigg's battery is still on the retreat. We have a big brigade over here. Can we get, can we get you involved a bit more, maybe? Hammond's brigade, they've taken some losses, but that's, that's okay. There's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of rebels trying to attack out of there. Wow, okay. See, this is what I mean. Should they be able to shoot canister rounds into point-blank combat like that? I don't know. It sounds a bit dangerous to me. I would not want to be on the friendly side. <laughs> right, we've got rid of those. Excellent. Keep moving up. Move up. They will rally. They will be to defeat again. One thing that this I don't feel that we've felt in this battle is an element of surprise. I mean, we obviously knew from the history of, of what was going to go on and what was coming, but it never felt like we were being about to be overrun. Unlike in that um, crossroad fight, where it very much did feel like we were about to be overrun at any time. Right at the start, that, that really caught us out. That battery is being absolutely destroyed there. Your higher volunteers now coming across the field. Blake's brigade looking so badly beaten up. Uh, Alex's skirmishes, you can rejoin them. And I think what we're going to do is probably let's let's march north and just uh, get behind some defences up there. Okay, we should be fine up there. I don't think we're going to lose that position. You guys are now fighting in the open field, which... Well, it is what it is, and it happens. So we need... I feel like I want to maintain the integrity of the line. And anything that comes out to attack them then gets instantly blasted in the flight by the artillery. But we are now starting to turn the... turn the fight here. Some Kraken's coming up. The Frisian volunteers uh, can actually carry on Frisian volunteers, 254 casualties, 1,630 kills. Right, I'm going to give Badger's Brigade a bit of a rest, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hop them up there, and Bruce's men are going forward. Bruce is not part of our army. If Bruce loses a load of men and weapons, and we can pick up those weapons afterwards, then I'm happy. Actually, what's he using? The 0.69 muskets, because, of course. Well, I mean, I can still use them. I, I think I still have to buy some to equip some of the... Uh, guys. Have you... 
Oh no. I was looking at uh, Frangus's battery, thinking they'd lost a lot of men, but they started at 300. It was Ben's that started at 400. A brutal fight today. Come on, we'll get Wood's men defeated. I just want to take the strain off uh, Blake's brigade there. It looks like, I mean, not only are we going to hold Pittsburgh Landing, it looks like we're going to hold the Hornet's Nest, which historically they didn't do. I think it was late in the day, but eventually this area fell. But you can see, I mean, we have recreated it, and look at the, the wave of um, soldiers. There's been casualties galore. This feels like a, a proper slaughter fest. Come on. Keep going. Keep going. Take out that artillery. We're going all the way around the back of them today. There must be an opportunity now for the cavalry to get in and come out of the woods and storm into someone. That's a charge. Where's that going ahead? Come on, we're going to outflank everything we can. Keep chasing those boys. And make sure the Sumber Krakens are going round the back. If we can scoop up these rebels. Is that another. It's another formed brigade. I can't find anywhere where I can just throw the cavalry in where they don't have a perfect opportunity to attack. Oh, we've got reinforcements. Excellent. These are, these are Buell's Army of the Ohio, I think, turning up. So our guys at this point can actually... I'll put, I'll put um, Alex's brigade into there. But we can use these for day two. Yeah, they're clearly not ours because they're much bigger brigades than we can currently control. That is good news, though. Frisian volunteers are just taking out those cannon. Oh, the St. McCracken's decided to go in, did they? Uh, I'm not sure that's a good idea. We got we captured Wood's brigade. Excellent. In fact, let's just let's just get him up to the rear so we don't. I didn't see what happened there. I'm guessing we've maybe charged in. I'm going to charge these this battery and uh, let's hope well some crackers did the job they took some more casualties which I'm not overly happy about but I don't know if I've never seen a battery get captured actually oof they did take canister in the face but it wasn't a very well organized um, volley or well, the trees deflected it or something, but they did all right there. So that should be fine. Oh, what was this? This this uh, this is night time. This is night time. Okay, Battle of Shiloh, second day. We held out, but the fight is not over. The rebels stand ready to attack us again, but probably they don't know that all our reinforcements are now present. We can counterattack and sweep them from the field.